Season's greetings! That's right, it's Christmas time. Everybody paid loans and time. Children don't come for fast wine. We logs for the fire, so we'll hit it on the tree. With a million people in Scotland living fuel poverty. That was my idea for the John Lewis Christmas advert. No idea why they didn't go for it. Anyways, aye, it's that magical time when you wait all year for it and then you can't see the back yet quick enough. Thoroughly depressing to think that the number of people who won't be able to turn the heating on this Christmas has risen since last year. But as old Cliff says, we need to rejoice in the good stuff that comes at Christmas. Which for me is not the receiving of gifts, or stuffing my face at the dinner table. It's not even the coming together of family, because let's face it, some of them can be a total nightmare. Nope, for me, it's Christmas movies. The real feel-good ones, you know? Not the ones based on total fantasy, like Miracle on 34th Street, or Santa Claus the Movie. And not even the classic, It's a Wonderful Life. No, for me, it's Die Hard and Die Hard 2, and my all-time favourite, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Or what about another classic? Trading Places. Now, I watched this again recently and some things struck me about it. Um, oh, by the way, spoiler alert! If you've not seen it, why not? It's hilarious! But don't worry, I won't give too much away. Some facts about the movie. The film came out in 1983, 30 years ago. Um, when they start Valentine as man's and director at Duke & Duke, his salary is $80,000. When one thought is on his knees outside the bank, he says he's got $150,000 in his account. And when the Dukes lose big on the stock market, they lose $394 million. Now, even today, those sums of money seem astronomical to ordinary people. I mean, can you imagine earning what would be, by today's exchange rates, about £50,000 a year? Now, it's not easy to pin in just how much a managing director of a major commodities broker would make now. But if you recall a banker uh, that was sacked after he flashed a tenor at protesting nurses and told them to get a job? Well, he was on a basic of 350000 plus an average bonus of fifty four grand. So we can guess that someone like Winthrop or Valentine would today be earning well over a million a year. Easily 10 times what they pay in the film. So we can guess that his bank account would easily be 10 times larger. And then so. And we can only wish that Alexi RBS lost just 394 million. I mean, even the co-op lost over a billion. And they don't do any of the risky investment trading or short selling that the Dukes were trying to get away with. Now... I know I said I like films that aren't based on fantasy, because let's face it, if trading places really happened, Winthorpe and Valentine would have been sent to prison for market manipulation, and the heartless selfish dukes would have been bailed out by taxpayers. There's another scene in the film that I like. It's when the waiter Ezra arrives to give the dukes their regular glass of warm milk, and Ralph Duke gives them a Christmas bonus of $5. Ezra jokes that he might go to the movies by himself, but today he'd have no chance of doing that. Anybody that's been in a picture of his lately would be lucky to come away with change at 30 quid. But the scene was meant to convey how tight the millionaire Duke brothers were, something that us Scots are often accused of being. Of course, we all know that's absolutely pure mince. Five? We're not tight, we're poor. A fiver today, just as it was 30 years ago, can be a fortune to most of us. But if you can afford it, please, please put a fiver into the charity tin this Christmas. Organisations like Shelter, Crisis, Centrepoint, as well as some of the, whole, the smaller city-based homeless charities like St Giles in Edinburgh are going to need a lot of help this winter. And for those that can af can't afford to, please check in on your neighbours. It's going to be a very cold winter and the big six energy companies won't be doing any checking to see if people are getting on alright. The independence question is about who's best placed to look after the people of Scotland. 
the heartless banker backed Westminster or the people of Scotland? Well, I don't see any of those in the city of London chapping on doors in Scotland to check on people at any time of the year. Never mind when it's most needed. And the only time you'll see Westminster chatting on doors is when they want your vote. Isn't that right, Eddie? Yeah. So let's look after each other. Not just for Christmas, but always. Let's do our bit to make it a very Merry New Year! Happy Holidays, everybody! Wow.